All right, in this next question, we're gonna look at letter formation, a letter formation question, and just be a little bit more mindful of some of the skills that are involved in letter formation and the sequence of those skills. And I referenced this earlier, learning without tears. A lot of teachers use this curriculum or something similar to it, but here we have a curriculum. It's, it's, it's designed to help students with letter identification, letter naming, letter formation, and basic letter sound correspondence. And I've mentioned four skills there. And the fourth one was the alphabetical principle, matching up a letter or a grapheme with its predictable sound. In this case right here, this letter makes the L, -L sound in lizard. This type of curriculum, it, it, it looks at the features of each of the letters, whether it's uppercase and lowercase. When I say features, I'm talking about how many vertical lines or horizontal lines or a big line or short line or how many curves. Is it a big curve? Is it a short curve? Or how many diagonals are in the words? And when teaching the sequence of ideas, the words, it's not going to teach all uppercase letters and then all lowercase letters. Rather, it's going to focus on the uh, letter features, um, the ones that are most basic first. So maybe target letters that have straight lines first, then add on letters with curved lines. And then finally working on letters with diagonal lines, because that's going to take the most uh, uh, fine motor skills. All right. All right, team, I'm not an expert on letter formation. I just know the basics enough to help you with this question. So uh, let's take a moment. Let's read it. Uh, you're going to notice that this is a longer question, right? I don't think it's any harder than the ones that we've seen. And, and you shouldn't shy away from this question. I know it's from the reading specialist exam. So yeah, it's going to be harder. What's going to make it harder is because it's longer. But I feel that if we understand the scenario that's going on here, it really won't be that hard once we recognize it, okay? So I want you to take, this is probably going to take, I don't know, two minutes, three minutes. Uh, I need you to read this question now. Pause me. Take a deep breath and read it to yourself. Go ahead, do that now. If you haven't paused me, pause me right now. Just pause it. <laughs> okay, now I'm spending a lot of time pointing out these questions here. One sentence question, the answer, the answers are in like a, a half sentence form, basic question, so that we can look at this one right here and be like, oh, wow. So this is what a longer question looks like, right? Because each one of these are a little bit different. And we can, we can learn from these questions in different ways. One, we're going to learn that, hey, some of the questions on my test, your test, are going to take a lot longer than others. Some are going to be fast and quick. Some are going to take more time, right? And you need to prepare for that. You need to train for that. That's why you, you practice doing different practice exams because you'll have some short questions and you'll have some long questions and you'll get to manage it so you don't freak out on the day of the test when you get a long question, right? All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read it. And with these longer questions, I'm going to paraphrase things in it. So here, I'm going to read it first. It says here, in a team meeting, pre-kindergarten and kindergarten teachers consult with the school's reading specials about which approach is most effective for teaching the alphabet to young children? So what do we have? Uh, we have a group <laughs> of teachers. Uh, teachers in pre preschool. So we're looking at our pre-kindergarten, uh, our, 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 four, our four to five-year-olds and kindergarten, five to six-year-old uh, teachers, right? And they're, they're working with a senior teacher, like a reading specialist. So we have a group of teachers. And what are they talking about? They're talking about um, how to teach the alphabet uh, to this group of young children. So young children is going to be the th four to five and the five to six. So basically what that says is teachers are talking about the alphabet, right? Okay, what's the next sentence? According to evidence on how children best learn to recognize and name letters. Okay, so we're going to do... A, uh, a letter. This is a letter uh, recognition and naming activity. Is that right? That's that's really what this is getting to. 
according to research on letter recognition and naming, which of the following approaches should the uh, specialist recommend? So basically what it's saying is, how would you do letter recognition and naming? That's, that's what this is saying, right? What would be the way you would start letter recognition and naming? Would you, um, would you do this? Um, would you introduce the alphabet song? Let's circle that. With accompanying whole body movements that correspond to the holistic shapes of each letter before beginning practice and naming randomly ordered sets of letters. Well, first of all, that's really long, right? But let's just stop at alphabet song. Remember, that's kind of like a red flag. Not that it's it's going to be very helpful to get the, the name of letters in the student's oral language. So yes, the child, a two-year-old, a three-year-old can acquire um, the name of letters, get, it, get that word A, B, C in their oral language. So yes, that's going to be helpful. But in terms of recognizing, I don't know if that's the best way to go, or at least it's it's one way to in, to get the language um, to get them to build their oral language, but it's not necessarily the best way. And forming these letters, <laughs> I don't know. I've never been very good at that, right? <clears throat> it sounds really fun, but I don't know if it's the best way uh, for introducing this. How about this one right here? So we're going to red flag it, right? Red flag. And I could have, we could have stopped there at the alphabet song. Like, stop. Don't do the alphabet song. That's not, okay, so, we, so we're going to red flag that. How about this one right here? Categorize letters of the alphabet in sets of letters that are formed and pronounced in similar ways. So I like this. So we're going to organize, this makes sense. We're going to organize them on how they're formed. And, and that seems very similar to what I said. I mean, how they're formed, like curves and straight lines and okay. And how they're pronounced. Hmm. Okay. But here's the red flag in teaching letter names in sets of five or six letters a week. Do you see that? Red flag. Why is that? Why is that off? Five or six letters a week. Well, first of all, we don't do that. Uh, this is, uh, I, I bet there are a bunch of teachers in this room that don't know what I'm talking about. And then there are other teachers in this room that do know what I'm talking about. But if I told you if we're, for your classroom, you're gonna teach six letters a week, how would that go? I mean, seriously, how would that go? Maybe for the first week or two, it might kind of work, but it would fall apart, right? Now, when we look at this right here, this is, this is a several month sequence, right? Building these skills out. This is something you can stretch this out and build it out through the whole year, right? From, from September all the way to May for uppercase and lowercase. So this is something which you're doing one or two words a week. Okay. So do you see the red flag there? Doing six, six letters per week. That's too much. Too much. Other things sound good. Like uh, thinking about the letter and their form, that, that sounds good. I mean, there's something there, but uh, this is way too much. Okay, how about this one right here? Uh, teaching letter recognition and formation of uppercase letters to master before introducing the concept of lowercase uh, forms and then provide supplemental instruction in lowercase letters for those that differ from their uppercase form. So this is saying, uppercase before lowercase. And it does make sense to do uppercase first. Those are easier to form. So, you know, if I were to read this over, I might go for A. Here's why it's B, okay? Focus attention on distinct features of a given letter. So this is really important. We're gonna be focused targeting letters and we're gonna target a letter with a, that has a straight lines or curves, right? We're gonna do straight line letters first, straight line letters, and then curve letters, and then diagonal letters. I think this is the, this is the approach. And, and we're gonna do a combination of capital and lowercase because capital, these capital and lowercase letters 
they have that same feature. This is the most basic one, straight lines are the most basic. So you would be doing the straight line letters first, capital and lowercase, before you moved on to curved letters, which would include some capital and some lowercase. And then at the very end, you would leave the, the words with the, the letters with the diagonal lines. Okay, now, now team, if you're not, if you have no exposure to letter formation, there's so many ways to go wrong. Maybe you were like, yeah, I do the alphabet principle, or maybe five or six letters a week seems pretty efficient. Or maybe you'd be like, you know what, I'll, I'll do uppercase first because I heard that uppercase was easier to do. So let me circle the key word here to remember. Focus on the distinct features of the letters, the vertical lines, the curves, okay? And when teaching this stuff, uh, do two, one or two, but do, do ones that have different features so they get to practice a straight line and a curve and they can see how the, how the letters look different and how they require different skills. That's the other piece. Okay. All right. Maybe this is a hard one for you, right? So when you have a question like this on your test, if you ever do, um, can you watch out for that as a red flag and watch out for that as a red flag? Yes. And then uh, even this right here, do uppercase first as, a, as opposed to distinct features. If you had a choice, I want you to remember if you had a choice involving letter naming and letter recognition, start with the features of the word. Straight line words, letters with straight lines first, then curves, uh, then diagonals, okay? And then, then also the idea of comparing the letters, okay? All right, this is a hard one. I got to throw in some hard ones here, right? It can't all be easy, easy, easy. It's going to be some challenging ones. Team, when you get to a challenging one like this, the, the faster you can get comfortable with it, or maybe you never get that comfortable, maybe you just walk away from this class and you're like, okay, I'm going to cross this one out and I can see this one's wrong. All right. So we've, we've cut out 50% of the answers. That has improved your chances of getting it right by 50% then maybe you're gonna to have to study it a little bit more to realize, oh yeah, that's what I'm looking for. This is the stuff that's important. The, the features of the words are important. That's what I gotta remember. That comes first, the actual features of the letter. Uh, um, that would come before uppercase and lowercase, okay? Because there are gonna be some uppercase letters, right? And lowercase letters that are made up of those straight lines. All right. Team, this one came from the 62. It's supposed to be more challenging. You get some exposure to some ideas here, um, some, uh, some other things too. So maybe this exposure helps you on the day of the test, okay? All right, we're going to keep going, team, all right? So keep trucking, and I'll see you at the next question.